Mazel Tov, Spartans. Happy Wednesday, April 17th. This will be my last day in Phoenix, Arizona. I'll be back for Friday. Uh, with that being said, again, there is no Zoom meeting today, second hour from 9.15. Check that, 9.30 to 10.15. Uh, but you still need to check in. Uh, I'll be back again on Friday, but uh, if you haven't checked in with me by email, make sure again you do so before the end of the week. We are talking about our unit one review. I'm going to run through some information, point out, make sure we're on the same page, and it'll be a nice little setup for our unit one project. Again, no tests for this unit. We're going to do a family analysis, and I'll explain how to do that. And then you have more or less the rest of the week, the next week, today, Friday, uh, the following week until Wednesday. Double check. Yep, Wednesday the 24th to get that done. So let's get into it. Uh, the review questions, again, you're supposed to respond to these. I don't need to go through every question here, um, but just point out some key information. Again, uh, a social structure. What is a social structure and how it affects society? We all know what the social structure is, right? The hierarchy, the class system, right? Top, middle, bottom. We got that part. But what I've seen in the in-person class is the second part of the question, how it affects society. Remember, your position on the social structure impacts and affects your relationships and your behavior that you have with the other people that are above and below you. Your position in the social structure more or less establishes your pattern of behavior. Think about this. I would imagine your parents are at the top of the social structure in your family. Your parents act differently than you do. Why? Because they're at the top and you're probably somewhere in the middle. Your younger siblings are beneath you on the social structure. Their pattern of behavior is completely different. In addition to the behavior, again, the relationships you have, how you act towards the people who are above you and beneath you is determined by your social structure. My guess is you talk to your younger sibling or your older siblings talk differently to you than they do to your parents. Why? Again, social structure. We know what perspective is, right? We know that's the viewpoint, but explain what the sociologist's perspective is. And again, we look at groups. We're not looking at individuals. We are looking for a pattern of behavior amongst a group of people, sociological imagination. I don't think I need to explain this one, but this one's talking about bias. You need to know who you are, what you are, and recognize what that means. So when we're trying to analyze other people or other societies, we don't have a bias. Defining the key concept, concepts of sociology. I know for a fact that culture, social action, power, and social structure, you're okay with. Functional integration is one that people in the in-person class have struggled with. Functional integrations talk about the components of society that perform a function. Here's what we need to look at. I'll type this down so we can have a components of society that perform a function. And here's the key part of it. Components of society that perform a key function to make society operate efficiently and consistently. So let's think of it this way. How do we know what side of the road to drive on? How do we know to greet people with a handshake? How do we know to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening? Hello, goodbye, take care, farewell. How do we know what to start a letter with? How do we know that murder is illegal? How do we know to value things like independence, responsibility, punctuality? How do we know that we walk on the right side of the hallway? How do we know what time work starts, work ends? When do we know, or how do we know when and at what time, uh, when we eat what meals? Like all these things we know, we operate more or less efficiently and consistently. Doesn't matter where you're born, doesn't matter what color your skin is, doesn't matter if you're wealthy or poor, doesn't matter if you're black or white, we all have an understanding of what we are supposed to do and how we are supposed to act every single day. 
The question is, to understand functional integration, how do we know what we are supposed to do? Where do we learn what we are supposed to do? Where do we learn how we are supposed to act? It is the components of society that perform a function that tell us that when we get up, we brush our teeth, take a shower and put clothes on. We eat breakfast, we go to work, we go to school, have to be on time. We know how to get there. We know the roads to travel there. Millions of people in this country drive and we manage to do so relatively efficiently and relatively consistently. Why? Because we all know that we drive on the right side of the road when we see a, I don't know what shape a stop sign is, but when we see a red sign that says stop in white letters, we know to stop. When we see a green light, we go. When we see a red light, we stop. And then when we see a yellow light, I would imagine most of you accelerate to get through so you don't have to stop. Where do we learn this stuff? Again, it's the components of society that perform a function. So let's think school, religion, government, that starts with a G. These are all components of society that teach us how to do things. Functional integration are the parts of society that teach us how to be a part of society, of the society. That one's been a little bit difficult for kids in class. The rest of these are pretty well straightforward. Number five, explain what drives sociological change from the functionalist perspective or from the functionalism perspective. Again, we talked about, if it's, if it's talking about functionalism or functionalist, we are talking about functional integration. Change one of these components that perform a function, then we're gonna have change. Number six, explain what drives social change from the conflict perspective. That always begins with power. Symbolic interaction, what drives our responses to images, objects, or people? Some of you may have written down social action. This is a bit of a tricky question. But what drives our response to images, objects, and people? Again, that is our past experiences. Functions, we know that fun another review here of functions. Functions are components of society that serve a purpose so society operates efficiently and consistently. You could more or less say that functions are the reason why societies are able to operate. Manifest and latent functions. Manifests are the obvious, the obvious reasons we go to school. Sorry, the obvious reasons why uh, we do things. Why do we go to school? To learn. Manifest, it's obvious. Latent is the unintended, unintended results of a function. You go to school to learn, but I can guarantee while you guys have been going to school to learn, you've established relationships. You've built friendships. There are some things that you've enjoyed, some things that you haven't enjoyed. That's not, that's not the purpose. That is not the function of going to school. The obvious function of going to school is to learn, to be educated, manifest. Latent, unintended. Friendships. What is the reason we drive cars to get from point A to point B? What is the unintended consequence of driving a car? Environmental pollution. Car accidents. Dysfunction, dysfunctions always have consequence, right? A problem. We try to minimize problems. We try to get rid of dysfunction. We have all sorts of components to society that perform a function. If they're not performing a function, that's dysfunction. Think about this. One component of our government, one part of our government function is documentation. Filling out documents takes time, especially when it's on paper. You have to hand write it, you have to mail it, you have to wait for someone to receive it, read it, respond to your document and then send it back to you. There's some dysfunction there. The dysfunction, the consequence of paper documents is a loss of time. It's manual. What is everything becoming in the 21st century? Automated. We don't do things on paper anymore. This class, we don't do things on paper. It's all electronic, it's all automated. It's quick, it's easy, it's efficient. Societies are always looking for ways to remove dysfunction, consequence, 
from a function not performing the way it should or with the best efficient results possible. Values, we know what values are. Those are the things that we find important in society. Independence, responsibility, dependability. More or less influences our behavior and what we do in every other component of society. The next couple, we got 20th century women in the United States, Black Lives Matter, Martin Luther King. Um, what do we got here? <laughs> Black Americans uh, receiving more education. To be quite honest, there is no one best way to analyze these societal change changes. You could have talked about from a functionalist perspective. You could have talked about it from a conflict perspective. You could have talked about it from a symbolic interaction perspective. Any one of those theoretical um, perspectives would have allowed you to analyze any of these societal changes. It's going to be up to you and what you guys see. There is no one perfect way to analyze any societal change. And that's the way it's intended to be. That's the way it's supposed to be. Because the ultimate goal of looking at it from three different perspectives, whether it be functionalist, conflict, or symbolic interaction, is to trying to figure out what, what is the actual driver of the societal change. Is it, is it social action? Is it people responding to something based on their past experience? Is it, is it a power conflict? Is it group A, sorry, is it group B upset with group A having the power? Or is it functionalism? Did we, was there a, a change in society that we didn't know was going to have such an impact? So there's no one right answer there. I did skip 14. Again, this is um, technological advancement and people moving from farms to factories. Again, you could have analyzed this from any, any one, any of the three perspectives. There wouldn't have been a wrong answer there. All right, so that can get turned in, submitted when you are finished. Your unit one project. Previous years, we've done a test. I decided not to do a test because it really doesn't, it doesn't do a couple of things. Uh, one, it doesn't allow you the test, how it was written. It doesn't allow you to actually apply this. And two, it doesn't prove what you actually know and understand. This project will change that. What you are to do, is you are going to run an assessment of your family. You're going to analyze your family. <clears throat> You're going to analyze your family's functional integration. You're going to analyze your family's power, family's culture, your family's social action, and your family's social structure. And then when you're done with the initial component of this project, you're going to analyze the changes that your family has gone through. You're going to think of three scenarios that your family experienced that resulted in permanent or temporary change. Now, I have it listed there as society. In this particular case, your family is going to be your society, a small society, but a society nonetheless, because a society is, wait for it, a group of people. Your family is a group of people. You're going to pick three changes your family went through, and you're going to analyze those changes from one of the um, theoretical perspectives, okay? You do not need to analyze each change three different ways. You're going to consider one change to your family, one change that you guys experienced, and you're going to analyze it from a functionalism perspective. And then you're going to look at a different change your family went through. And you're going to analyze it from a conflict perspective. And then you're going to analyze a third change your family went through, and you're going to look at it from a symbolic interaction perspective. You can see how things are being graded here. All right. Um, the original family analysis, again, we're talking here about the key components, key parts of sociology. And then you get 15 points for your functionalist perspective, conflict theory perspective, and symbolic interaction perspective. The last 20 points are based on the images that you have on there. And you should have an image, one, one image for each change that you went through, some sort of graphic picture that would kind of give me an idea of, of what was going on in that scenario. And then obviously being neat and colorful. Now, I've provided a template and in my in-person class, they did this on paper. 
Not going to be an option because you either have to drop it off or mail it to me and I don't want to deal with that. But I've given you a template of what this could look like because some people will struggle with how to set this up. And again, this is just my template. It doesn't have to exactly look like this, but obviously it would be easier for you if you just follow this layout. First part, you're going to analyze your family from the five key concepts of sociology. Let's start with social structure because that's one that we're all going to understand. Explain to me, show me the class system, the class breakdown of your family. Who is the person in your family who's at the top? Who is the person on the bottom? Who are the people in the middle? What's come up in the uh, in-person class is, well, who are we considering to be part of our family? Good question, because we all have extended families. I would cons leave it to your immediate, immediate household, the people that you live with. Who are the people in charge of the people that you live with? Who are the people that are told what to do? Again, of the people that you live with. The rest of these, some are easy and some are difficult. Power, pretty straightforward here. Basically, what you have down in your social structure for who's where in your household is going to cause you to explain who's in power in your family. Now I have on here explanation or description. Let's be honest, we all know how to explain what social structure is and we all know the definition of functional integration. I'm not looking for you to tell me that functional integration is the components of society that perform a function. Fantastic, we all can copy things down out of the book. What I'm asking you to do is to apply that definition to the things that your family does so I can get an understanding of whether or not you understand what functional integration is or what power is. So again, social structure is pretty straightforward, but functional integration, that one's been the difficult one. What is it that your family has that makes your family operate efficiently and consistently? What are the parts of your family that teach you and show you how you are supposed to operate and exist within your family. So again, if we were to go to the back to the review, which unfortunately I closed out, what is the school, government, religion of your family? What is it that reinforces for you that your parents are at the top and your youngest sibling is at the bottom and you are in the middle? How do you know? What function of your family has shown you that you get up in the morning by a certain time? You brush your teeth, you put on your clothes, you eat breakfast, you get ready for the day. How do you know that you are supposed to go to school? Do your job, get good grades, leave school, perhaps get a job, take care of your younger brothers and sisters. Where is that being taught? So we've got to figure out what it is about our family, what our family has that has shown you how to act. Perhaps you could have in here for functional integration, your parents have modeled a certain behavior. Perhaps you could talk about how your family has dinner or breakfast every single day together. So your parents can show you and explain to you what is to be done and what is not to be done. Perhaps your family is very athletics-based or church-based or um, civic group-based, think like the um, the Lions or the Legion or the VFW or the Mohawks or the Masons, whatever it is that show you community, that have taught you community and responsibility and charity. Could be, literally be anything. But what is it that your family does that has shown you and helps you learn how you are supposed to act in society? Again, power. I know what power is. Group A controls group B. Got it. Tell me who is in power in your family and tell you tell me who is a subordinate in your family. Culture, what is your family's culture? What is it that you believe? What is it that your family values? What is it that your family does? Just need a brief explanation. And the same as with social action. What do your family, what do you do? You guys all about music? Do you play music together? Do you go to picnics? Do you go to family reunions? What is it? Underneath, again, we're going to analyze one change. And in the middle here, you're going to explain to me the scenario. Maybe you got expelled from school. 
Maybe you, uh, conflict, maybe you disagree about where you're going to go after you graduate from high school. Uh, maybe you and your, your family react differently to, um, Christmas. I don't know what it is. It could be literally anything, but tell me what the scenario is. All right. What the change is. And then analyze that change from each of these perspectives, right? One change, one perspective. I have put in the assignment, a template for you to use. Cause I'm a giver. I'm a giver. I'm a charitable person. Um, you should be able to since everyone will get their own copy when they open it up in Schoology, um, you should just be able to swap these things out. All right. Um, you know, you should be able to delete explanation and description and write things right in there. For the pyramid to put people in their appropriate social structure, you may have to add a text box inside of the pyramid and make it fit so things uh, will work out for you. So you can make things. Uh, work. Perhaps you have to, you may have to change. Yep. There we go. You may have to change the font to make everything work. Now there are other softwares that you can use, right? You can use canvas um, or um, there's all sorts of apps that you can use uh, on your Chromebook. Whoopsies. Get rid of that. There we go. Uh, you can use whatever program you want. I just gave you a template here and an example and you can fill it in. Perhaps you'll find that this isn't enough room for you to put what you want to put down. Fantastic. You know what? If you want to, um, you can duplicate slides and fill things in how you want and then get rid of on the various slides, the parts that you've already put somewhere else. So this is more or less kind of a form for you to fill out and you can make it work for you. That's, that's kind of up to you. Um, but this is what you're working on today, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, next week, and then it's due by next Wednesday. If you have any questions, I'll be, and you probably will. Shoot me an email. I'll be glad to help you. Again, I'll be back in class on Friday, and the Zoom may not work for people. Uh, if the Zoom during the morning, 9.30 to 10.15, doesn't work. Oh, I went to the wrong week. If the Zoom doesn't work uh, and you would rather you know, chat via Zoom so we can have an actual conversation. That's perfectly fine. Um, so shoot me an email and we'll see if we can figure out a time to set up a Zoom where you can we can get together and kind of go through the questions that you have. So give it a rip. Have a good rest of the day. Enjoy the uh, next couple of days and hopefully I'll see or hear from you guys by uh, by Friday this week. Take care.